Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit about Linux Mint's new web app manager. This is basically the ICE application from Peppermint, and I think that this is a major significant change that we are going to start seeing added bundled in with Linux Mint in the future. If you did not follow my banking setups, where I actually run my banking computer on a separate USB drive, it's an encrypted USB drive with its own operating system, I can plug that into any computer in the office and run all my banking stuff on. It is the only computer in this house where any of the banking information is stored. And uh, I've, I do have backups of stuff, encrypted backups as well. But as far as the operating systems itself, it is the only place I access anything like that. This actually gives me a lot of benefits. One primary benefit that I see from this type of, uh, this type of reaction is that I have the ability to make sure that no bank can see any other bank and no other website can see whatever banks I'm working with. It's really a, a good separation technique. And to do this operating system, I have classically used Peppermint because it has ICE applications already configured. Now, for sure, you can install ICE on pretty much any distribution, but I like the fact that it was already embedded, it already worked, and on top of that, Peppermint's also super lightweight, which is the type of distro that I would like for a USB drive. Because it's portable, I can plug it into any computer, even a kind of a lower spec one. Well, fast forward to 2020, and the Linux Mint team is working with the Peppermint team to implement their own version of this as a Linux Mint tool. So, of course, Linux Mint does a lot of things other than just Cinnamon. They have a lot of Linux Mint tools and applications. These are the basic utilities in the computer that I like being installed, although some people might call them bloat. But for my case, I actually really like these being installed because when I need a disk manager, I don't have to install one or poke around or whatever else I need to do. It's there. It's I have a nice GUI tool. And this is basically joining their family of applications. So from their website, this is again from their latest blog post, they're talking here about the ICE applications, what it is, and uh, they give us down near at the bottom, they'll actually give us a, um, uh, a dev package to try out the alpha version. Now the version that I have tested out is a little bit different and that it doesn't have the checklist box here. It has a drop down list instead. So I'm not sure if this is a newer or an older screenshot based upon the one that I have. Although I do like this a little bit better. Uh, because I can see that this application will work with Brave, Chrome, Chromium, Gnome Web, Vivaldi, or Firefox. Why are some of them grayed out and some of them are, are dark? Well, the grayed out ones mean that those are not installed on the system, but if you were to install them on the system, you can use it. So before we dive much further, what is this? Well, this is a means to create a containerized application out of a website. So for example, if you are still using Gmail or Outlook, or if you're using Google Docs or Microsoft Office 365 on Linux, and you're utilizing mostly the web-based versions, this is a means for you to create a web application that keeps you logged in, but isolates your browser from everything else that you're doing. So as you're browsing the rest of the web, while you have Microsoft Office 365, for example, open and you're logged in and doing something on it, Microsoft can't see all of the other things that you're doing on your other web browsers. That's really the purpose of it, and that's really why I like this, this tool. Of course, you can set it to be isolated or not isolated. Firefox, you can see here, is always isolated. The other ones are not necessarily isolated. You can choose to isolate them or not. They talk a little bit here about the uh, the collaboration that they are working with the Peppermint team working on the ICE application and what Linux Mint is calling web apps utility. So they have the basic information. Uh, for those interested, it is 100% back and forth compatible with ICE. They are utilizing the same back end, so you can use either U uh, UI that you would prefer. And there's some icon support theming for um popular websites as well. You can see Facebook and YouTube here are uh, in there. So and of course you can grab the favicons, things like that. So once you have created the web application, you can launch it directly. What it's going to do is in the category, it's going to add this to the menu. I'll show you how that works. And then you can go ahead and uh, launch it out and it's going to be its own separate window. So you can 
head on down and uh, let's see, you can get the beta version for available on the list here. So you can go ahead and do that. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump on over to a Linux Mint machine where I have this installed. All right, so here we are over on a Linux Mint machine. I think this is probably running 19.3 is my, my guess. This is just a Linux Mint machine that I have hanging around over here. And under our internet, you can see we have web apps as a utility. We have in here the Mint website and we have YouTube right now, and those are both mapped to the internet page. So they will appear in your menu. You can go ahead and right click. You can add them to the panel. You can add them to the desktop. You can add them to favorites. So for example, we just added YouTube to the favorites. So you can come on in over here, click on this guy, and it's gonna open up the page up to your uh, whatever your site is. So here I just kind of mapped that to my um, switch to Linux page here. So you can go ahead and get a web application directly over there. You'll notice it does not have the, uh, the menus up there. That's something you can enable or disable. Of course, if you hit your alt, you can go ahead and get your toolbar up there temporarily. So that's what the application allows you to do. So to use it, we're just going to boot up web apps and go ahead and we can add one, you can remove one, you can edit an existing one. Although in the edit an existing one, you can't change the, uh, you can't change the web browser it's using. So apparently once you have selected this, it is locked in. Uh, we have a launch button. So we'll go ahead and hit add and let's go, for example, let's say that you are using Office 365 for that example there. So just find the website you wanna log into. I'm gonna use this one here, it has a sign in button. I'm pretty sure if I hit go to the sign in here, then it's not gonna work directly here. I think it'll give me an error um, with this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use just this basic Office 365. When you land here and you're signed in, or if you're signed in, you might actually be able to uh, get in here and grab a better link. But for the sake of our example here, we're just going to go ahead and just grab that. So we'll go ahead and uh, put in your office link there. And then here we have the option to find a uh, icon from online. So sure, we'll go ahead and take the office one here. Now you can choose what category it is. This will determine where it appears on the menu. So go ahead and drop it into the office. And then it will give you here the version that I have here. Like I said, it's different from what was on the the pictures on the newsletter, we have a drop down list of all of the available browsers. I do like the other one better in that I can see what options are available. This one here, they kind of have to be installed. Again, we have Firefox, Chromium, Vivaldi, Brave, Chrome, and Gnome Web. Those are your compatible ones with this so far. So you can choose which one you want and then you can choose to isolate the profile or not. I'd recommend isolating the profile. This is going to keep you logged in on your web app, but it will not keep you logged in on the rest of your web browsers. So go ahead and hit OK. You can see it's over here, but we don't actually have to manage them from over here. You can now go into Office and you'll see here's Office 365. It appears nicely in our menu. So you can go ahead and click on this guy here. It's going to open it right on up and you can sign right on into Office 365. You can also, uh, as I said, you can uh, go into your office. You can right click if we wanted to add it to the panel, for example. Now we have a quick link to open up Office 365. So this is an excellent tool for any type of web application thing you use. Uh, as I said, I actually use this quite extensively for uh, banking for my various banking applications so that I can keep all of my banks isolated from each other and isolated from the rest of the internet as I'm doing my standard browsing. So this is an excellent new tool from Linux Mint. I can't wait to see it in full action when it's finally released, but I'm very happy to see that this is coming down the pipeline. Maybe the next time I do my banking computer, it'll just be Linux Mint XFCE. I don't know, there's some other things I really like about Peppermint too. But either way, this is an excellent application. I'm really pleased to see Linux Mint team working on this. This is just yet another example of why Linux Mint is so good with the different tools that they put in at any level of the operating system. So anyway, thanks for coming along on this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are not already, or check if you're still subscribed. YouTube's been messing with some of them algorithms. 
hit that notification bell if you are interested in receiving notifications and you can follow along on the social media sites as well if you would like extra confirmation when a video goes live. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.